to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today I'm actually coming to you from Cocoa Beach, Florida. We just wrapped up our shoot of season three of Long Ride Home in the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, within a few months, season two will begin to air on EWTN. So we're excited about kind of being a little bit ahead of the curve with our shooting of our reality show. And I'll tell you, uh, it's a reality show. There's no, it, it's, it's about the toughest thing I've ever done. Uh, riding these great distances, and uh, it's kind of like the Lord strips you down. Uh, uh, you know, you kind of come to an end of your strength. And what's so beautiful is that seems to be when the Holy Spirit uh, shows up, and and then it's it, then we're kind of going on Holy Spirit power, and and He shows up and does beautiful and powerful things. So uh, we're excited to be back in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're working uh, editing season two and season three. We're going to be uh, working on that, uh, editing that in a couple months. We start, but. You know, our, our ministry is called Deep Adventure Ministries, and, uh, but I've got a guest with us today who's even better than deeper. He's great. He's the great adventure. You know who I'm talking about. We have Jeff Cavins. Jeff, aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Good to be back with you, Bear. The Bear Wozniak Adventure starring Jeff Cavins is on the, <laughs> is on the show. Uh, Jeff uh, and I had coffee together. Uh, with Cindy, uh, maybe like three months ago in Minneapolis. Yeah. And we've been trying to get together for so many times because I have family that lives in that area. And then you said something crazy. What was it you, you, you mentioned that you thought you might like to do someday? I, I said I'd like to ride up to Alaska someday on my motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, didn't you say you wanted to go from like Florida to Alaska? Yeah, Florida to Alaska, the, kind of the ultimate adventure on the bike. <laughs> yeah, and that just kind of just grabbed, uh, grabbed me. I, that was like the Holy Spirit said, do it. You know, like, how could I not do that? If I, especially if I get to be with Jeff Cavins. So, so uh, we're working on that, aren't we? We're, uh, we're less than uh, 10 months away from starting that adventure next August. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about uh, taking the big, long adventure and also meeting up with a whole bunch of other brothers in the Lord. And on the way, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, but I don't know if you're man enough, Jeff. Well, you know, that's why I'm hanging around with you. I want to be a better man. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, have you ever ridden your motorcycle 1,000 miles in one day? You know, <laughs> I did about a month and a half ago. Two months ago, I did, actually. <laughs> so just actually, you actually have done what they call an iron butt. Yes. And how many miles did you actually go? Uh, we went 1,200 miles in a day. So you decided you would just to make a point. Yeah, you know, it's something, about, it's something I've wanted to do since I heard of the idea. I've got a lot of crazy ideas like coast to coast in 10 days and all 48 states in 10 days. There's what do you mean all it. 48? You're missing two. Uh, well, that, the, the ones here, but you and I are going to – you didn't invite me to Hawaii. Otherwise, well, I we'll, got we'll punch the Alaska ticket with you then. <laughs> yeah, we did. You know, we, we had a fantastic trip this last August. I, meet, I ride with like eight guys. And we went 4,500 miles in nine days. And on the last day, you know, we started Minneapolis to uh, Gillette, Wyoming, then went down to Denver, uh, Durango, Santa Fe, Winslow, oh, Arizona. Beautiful. Up through Utah, Idaho, and back through uh, Montana. But we, we were on our, uh, we, we went all the way to Idaho Falls and we had about 1,200 miles to go. And I looked at my buddy. We were riding just the two of us at that point, and I said, "Let's do it. Let's do. Let's go the whole way in one day, and we'll stop in Bismarck. We'll sleep for two hours in a hotel, and then we'll get back on, and we'll that we'll was go. wise. We, that was prudence. Yeah, we did. We slept for about almost three hours, what and time, uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, when I was done, I felt like a million bucks. I was. I really wasn't that tired. So well, you know, so so let's picture this. So. Did you do the official one where you went to the website and you yeah. clocked in? And so, so tell us about that. So you're, you're in uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, yeah. And, yeah. and you set the alarm clock for what time and what, what happens next? Well, we were we we had been on the trip. We had gone through Sturgis and everything, and we were on the tail end of the trip in Idaho Falls, and uh, and I said I said at that point, 
uh, let's let's go for it. And so we went online and we looked we looked for everything, you know, online with the Iron Butt Association and with the Iron Butt Association. What we what you do is you have to you really have to verify this. So you got to have a witness sign at the gas station you're starting at mileage picture, all of that. And then on the way, you have to have uh, receipts from all the gas stations with mileage. And then at the end, you have to have a witness sign off that you're here. This is your mileage. And you take a picture and you have to have a whole route. We did that the night before we left and we went 1,200 miles and got back to Minneapolis. Oh, so you went from Idaho Falls to Minneapolis. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so that's the after the end of already riding over 3,000 miles or about 3,000 miles, you're going to tack yeah, 1,000 miles. Yeah, we did about 3,500 miles uh, to that point. And some of the days were like, you know, 600-mile days. And so <clears throat> we were anxious to get home and to see our wives. And it's a little more of an incentive to go home, you see your wife, uh, instead of taking two to three days to come home and just do it in one shot. And my buddy and I talked to each other with Bluetooth, you know, headset. And we prayed, we prayed rosaries together. We prayed for our families and uh, just great fellowship, you know. Did you listen to any audible books or anything like that? You know, I, I didn't on that particular leg. We talked a lot about theology and prayed together. And and I just enjoyed, the you know, going through Beartooth and mm. just the, the beautiful, peaceful riding. You know? I've been I've been all those places. But yeah. Not on a motorcycle, but I've been I've been well, everywhere, man. I've been Route 66 when I was a kid, you know, with my parents. So we did yeah. that on this trip. We're down Winslow, Arizona. Yeah. Winslow, Arizona. I yeah. forget how the song goes exactly. But Seven Saints on My Mind. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So now um, when you're doing that ride, um, what was the were you did you get sleepy at all or did you? Your back I did at one point. I did at one point. We were going through. Um, it was on the thousand mile trip, and on that day we were going through Montana. Oh, that's just um, a long straight road, isn't it? And I, you know, what happened was that we hit rain, so we put our gear on, and my gear didn't breathe that well. You know, the the rain gear, and you get hot. And, and I started getting hot and kind of drowsy. And I told my buddy, I said, I don't care if I get wet. I, I got to get out of this. I got to wake up here. And so we yeah. we pulled over and I got a cup of coffee, took off the rain gear and literally felt like a, a million bucks after that. It was it was it's just a wise thing to do, you know. And, you know, coffee helps, too. Well, you know, Jeff, yeah. maybe we can do it. I mean, it's in my, the back of my mind to make a run like that when we do when we do our Cocoa Beach, Florida to, to uh, Skagway, Alaska run that we're going to be doing in August. But I just have the feeling. From a matter point of view of prudence, that we're gonna, I don't know how many thousands of miles we're going. I forget now, but um, you know, maybe maybe to kind of ease off the accelerator on that. <laughs> maybe maybe when we come back from Edmonton or something to Helena, I don't know. But anyway, um, really looking forward to that. And it says a lot about your um, your relationship with these others men. These other men, you've been riding together with them for how many how many road trips have you made like that? Uh, four four big ones. Yeah, it, most you know, of them are five thousand miles. And what does that do to your relationships? Well, I think, you know, it brings us together as brothers. You get to know each other, your strengths and your weaknesses. You know, you, you get an idea of, I mean, not any, but not everybody can just go and on a 5,000 mile motorcycle trip with a bunch of guys. And, 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 and some days it's a little harder because we might ride 600 miles and we're riding to a church, getting off the bikes and literally walking up to a platform and speaking to 500 people. And then having something to eat and then go to the hotel. So at the end of four or five, six hundred miles of riding it is, is an hour talk, you know, mm. but you other- get to know them. You, you, you get to know them, you know, their families. And, you know, if you're riding together like that, you'll get calls in the middle of your trip. You know that, oh, my son's in the hospital. Or my daughter's, you know, she got in a car accident or whatever. And that kind of weighs on you a little bit. And it gives you a chance to, to pray for them on the phone and, you know, get together. But uh, we, we speak at so many churches and men's groups that uh, uh, it gives them an opportunity to minister to men on the road. You know, I, I speak, but these guys are out there among the crowd and they're talking to guys and praying with them. And, and we get an opportunity to wit- we probably witnessed at gas stations and hotels to maybe 30, 40 people we, mm-hmm. you know, we yeah. actually witnessed to. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of similar with us when we do our run. We've done what's kind of like the same thing. With th- we've done three big rides and, uh, uh, you know, we're not speaking, but we're filming, and that's tough because you're you, you stop for gas and the cameras are on, and 
You know, yes. it, it's tough, especially when you have deadlines, especially when you're going across the desert or something. You got to get from point A to point B. There isn't a plan. There isn't a plan B. You got to get to that hotel that night. And my least favorite thing to do with my men is to ride at night. And it always seemed like we kind of ended up doing that. Oh, did you? Pushing so hard. But it really, it really gets down to what it means to be brothers and, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and the raw and the raw edges and the, you know, you know, bumping into each other. Uh, we're talking with Jeff Cavins, who is the man who's on the great adventure, wants to lead us on the great adventure. Uh, his, uh, his ministry, uh, and mine is the deep adventure, deep, the bear Wozniak adventure. So you got two adventure guides with you and we get back, we're going to talk about it, what it takes to be an activated disciple. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can sign up for our newsletter, which means every week you would get uh, uh, the radio show sent to you on an MP3 version before it even airs. And you can go to YouTube right now if you want to see what Jeff Cavins looks like and, uh, and, and check us out because we also are on YouTube. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I have Jeff Cavins with me. His uh, his uh, Bible timeline series is called The Great Adventure, and and uh, it's so interesting. My uh, that my ministry uh, developed to be calling Deep Deep Adventure, and so you got two adventurous guys with you, and and we're adventurous not because we ride motorcycles like Jeff just did, 1,200 miles in a day, or or um, uh, do other things like that. What makes our life adventurous is 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 living a life abandoned to the Holy Spirit. And Jeff did me a favor and sent me this new Bible. Now, I've been looking for a new Bible for years, uh, wanting to find a good Catholic Bible uh, that had the right footnotes. Uh, you know, really, to tell you the truth, Jeff, what it looks like, I love the leather, I love blue leather. Um, and a Bible could she kind of fit in your hand like a gun kind of fits, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know how when you pick up the right gun, you know, this is my gun? Yeah. You know, or like yeah. your, your motorcycle, you know, that's your, mo- when you sat on it, you knew that's the one I'm going to buy. I and, several uh, guns too. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Well, this Bible, when I opened it up in Hawaii uh, about a month ago, I, I just finally, someone's given me my Bible. I love uh, just one of, I mean, the blue leather. Okay. And then you stole my compass from my website that I used to, I used to have a website that had a, a compass on it. You stole that from me, or maybe I stole it from you. I don't know, but it's got emblazoned on the cover. <laughs> One of my favorite things, which is a compass, which kind of lets you know if you got a compass, you're on an adventure. Right. And then, uh, and then it has these these tabs where um, they don't stick out from the pages, but you can see the colored edge of the tabs for the different books of the Bible. And I and I just and and I love the footnotes. I love that it has Jeff Cavins as the guy behind all this. And so I went to go buy another one. They already sold out the first the first printing. By the but by the time the show airs, the second printing will be up. Where can they find this Bible? You can go to ascensionpress.com, and I think Amazon was selling it as well. Uh, but ascensionpress.com, and these first couple of printings, I think they're doing most of it. But bear, we I got to tell you, we were shocked. Let me see, uh, show it, the guys, show the people on YouTube what it looks like. Yeah, if you're looking on YouTube, you can see there. This is what Bear is talking about: the colors on the edge. Yeah. And then, and then the compass. Show them the compass. The compass, yeah. Yeah, if you're not watching on YouTube, you guys should watch this on our show on YouTube, too. <laughs> yeah, you so, know what? It's got the best cover for uh, uh, the, the it comes in, too. Isn't that nice? That's beautiful. I want to go Great. there. Yeah. Is that one of the pictures you took in Israel or what? No, no. That is a picture from Israel, but I didn't take it. I think they just got stock pictures or something like that. Well, I'll tell you that. that you guys, it's Christmas is coming up. This is a this is a book for anyone, men and women. But I've got to tell you, if you have a man, uh, a young man especially, this Bible is just so inviting. Don't you love it when the Bible comes to you and you? I remember when I published my first book, my my literary agent said, "Open it up, the, you know, the tomb that they sent you, and smell it." Mm-hmm. When I opened up that box and I and I opened up the Bible, I just smelled it. It's just like ah, oh, I can hardly <laughs> wait to. And I loved it so much, so I left it in Hawaii, thinking I'd get another one here. But it's on back order. But by the time the show airs, people can get it. But it's called yeah, the, the Great get, Adventure Bible. And you can get it. Where, where should they go to get it? 
ascensionpress.com. And what inspired this and how did this all come about? Well, you know, for for many, many years, I taught the Great Adventure Bible Study, which takes you basically through the whole Bible in chronological order. In other words, you learn how to, you learn how to read it as a story. And one of the crazy things is, Bear, is that, you know, the church tells us that we should read the Bible. Our, everyone tells us we should read the Bible. But rarely does anybody show you how to read the Bible. So that's what The Great Adventure is about. And it's we now have, uh, have been, uh, over a million people now have gone through The oh, Great Jeff. Adventure. Praise God. That's yeah. amazing. How yeah, does that make you feel? Oh, it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's, uh, I, you know, I remember when I, I was at the University of Minnesota, right where Bob Dylan stayed, and I was sitting in the car, and the idea came to me when I was 26 years old. And I was so excited because I envisioned in my mind this timeline chart and show people how to read the Bible by picking out the narrative books and then showing them where all the other books fit into these 12 uh, periods of salvation history. And I went, I went home, and for 48 hours, I put that chart together. I was so excited. And Bear, I didn't know that that 48 period would define my life. I didn't know that. That just thrills all. me. Just thrills me. I didn't. But, yeah. you know, what, what we did was we took the great adventure and we baked it into a Bible. In other words, it has the, if, you're, if, if you know, listeners are familiar with the Bible timeline chart, the colorful Bible timeline chart, they, they know about the various periods. And we take each one of those periods, like the return, you know, and uh, I'll just show you this. The, the return actual, from Egypt or? Yeah, the, the, it's a return from uh, Babylonian captivity here. And this, oh, it actually has that part of the chart there with a whole synopsis of that period. And then the color, color code on the side shows you all the books that belong in that period. So you're always, we're always reading in proper context. And, and it's, yeah. when, people, when people see it, they're like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted this. I've always wanted do, a do Bible. You ever, but do you ever, uh, do you get to the extent like where, when you're reading the life of David, that you insert the Psalms kind of in the right place in his story, or does it not? Yeah, we show you where the, we show you, show you where the Psalms fit, right? Yeah, just so beautiful. Um, God, I got to get one for my, for my, for my sons. <laughs> I mean, they, they will love that this Bible is just, it actually, you know, I mean, I love it because it's a great translation. Yeah. It's got great footnotes. Um, yeah. The Bible timeline is, is, is built through it. And it's I, got phenomenal articles in there by some of the best scholars in, in the world. We've got uh, Dr. Peter Williamson from Detroit, Dr. Mary Healy from Detroit. She's from Sacred Heart, she's on the Pontifical Biblical Commission. I mean, this is this is big stuff, you know. What are you doing? Fact, what are you doing with these these guys? That's a good question. Does, I think. Don't, don't you sometimes kick yourself? Yes. Yeah, I've got a lot of bruises on my legs, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew Swafford, Doctor Andrew Swafford, is part of the team, and uh, so you know, and we even have an article in there on how to pray Scripture, how to interpret Scripture. Praise Lord, oh, all kinds of stuff. Go go to that. Tell us about how to interpret scripture. If you, I know it's a big subject, but it's a very important subject. I know the Catholic oh, yeah, and, and uh, Dr. Peter Williamson is actually he is uh, he is a master uh, at it, and that's what he did his PhD, in. and he's the one that wrote this article in here on how to interpret scripture. And basically, the you know the, the steps are number one, you have to understand the intent of the of the human author. So if Matthew writes something, you got to you got to ask yourself. What was Matthew trying to get across here? And you do a little study on that. And then then you begin to look at, and that's called the literal sense, by the way. That's We talk about that. But then we get into what's called the spiritual sense. And this goes deeper. So everything you study, you first want to know what was the intention of the author. Second of all, what was the spiritual sense? And there's three aspects. Number one, the allegorical sense. In other words, how does this relate to Jesus? You know, if you're studying the temple in the Old Old Testament. How does this relate to Jesus? Then the, what's called the moral sense. How does it relate to me, my conduct, my life? And then third, the anagogical sense, and that is the future. How does this relate to heaven? How does this relate to the future? So, if it, so the church gives us some really good guidelines on uh, how to stay in bounds and how to mine 
uh, the depths of, of the Word of God. So we got a great article in there, and we also believe that everyone should be praying Scripture with Lexio Divina. Mm-hmm. And so we got a whole article on how do you how do you do that? We have a reading plan in there to read the the fourteen narrative books in three months. Uh, it's just this is a Bible to live in and to work in, and we believe that it's a Bible that that people will keep for the rest of their lives. It's also, I think, one of the only red letter editions. And that is all the words of Jesus are in red. You know, I got to tell you, I'm a Bible guy. I mean, I've, I used to have the this chronological Bible, you know, that best that they could, they would they chronologize it. I had two volumes of, of loose leaf Bibles. So um, I had two volumes of it so I could insert footnotes in between the leaves of Scripture as I was reading and studying. I mean, I, I, I love Bibles. Yeah. I got to tell you, this Bible, I, I mean, it, it just felt right when I opened it up and I'm I, I this is something people should get for their for, for their for their this is something if you it invites you to open it and yeah, it, it gives we, you a pathway into it instead of like this black box people don't know what to do with and we know what we did else uh, also bear is that I'm, I'm like you and we're both Bible guys we're both Bible connoisseurs on the margins on the side we built 50 percent more space on the side so that people could write in their oh, Bible. Oh, you shouldn't write in a Bible. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, we encourage people to live there. And, you, you know? and don't you encourage them to use highlighters, too? And Yeah. Well, well I, encourage them, I encourage them to use colored pencils to highlight. And it's called a zebra pen. You can get it at any office. And you do it in a thematic way. Hey, you know what, Jeff? we got to yeah. go. We'll be right back with more of Jeff Cavins. We got too excited about this, this new uh, <laughs> Great Adventure Bible. I love this Bible. It's, it's my Bible now. I love it. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and sign up for our, our tour that we're taking to in the footsteps of St. Paul this coming May. Uh, we go by bus to Thessalonica and uh, Athens and so many places, and then we take a cruise ship over to Ephesus, down to Patmos, and then uh, to Santorini, where my wife and I are betrothed. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I just invited everybody to go, go to our website, deepadventure.com, if you'd like to go with us to Greece. Uh, I've been ex- exclusively studying the life of St. Paul now for about nine months, and uh, I've been doing a series with Matt Swaim on the Sunrise Morning Show on Monday mornings. But uh, this guy that we have with us on our show, Jeff Cavins, he's been to the Holy Lands a few times. Uh, yeah. And you, you do a lot of pilgrimages. I mean, I... Uh, I haven't bumped in with, into you on a, on a pilgrimage yet, but tell us what you've got coming up as far as pilgrimages go. Sure. We, um, I'm going to be going uh, in January. That one's sold out. Um, we're going to January. That'll be my 54th trip to Israel uh, where I teach over there. and We actually go on, the, on a great adventure in Israel. And then we're planning right now. We have one every January, but we're planning kind of an epic trip right now in June of 2020 for young adults nationwide. And we're expecting that there might be 500 adults, young adults going over. We've got top singers. We've got Father Mike Schmitz, Father Josh Johnson. Um, it's going to be huge. We've got concerts on the Sea of Galilee, concerts in Bethlehem, a concert in Jerusalem. No, and, you don't. Oh, yeah. How do we you do, do that, Jeff? Amazing. Well, a lot of good organizing, you know, oh we got a good God. crew and, uh, but it's going to be an epic trip and it's going to be a time of discerning and decision for young adults. Oh, praise God. And where, and where do they, where do they go to find out more about that? They can go to my, my website, just jeffcavens.com. And we'll be, we'll be putting all that information up there. We're, we're just in the final steps of really, you know, getting that all put together, but boy, what a lineup. Of I want to go is, is I'm not young enough though, I guess. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're you're right about that age. You <laughs> look pretty good. I could still be a sneak into the teen and young adult section. No, we have we have adults we have adults coming with us too that are going to be accompanying and yeah. old people like me. Hey, Jeff, me. we're going to get carried away again, and we're not going to talk about your your new book. We talked about it over coffee uh, in Minneapolis a couple months ago. It's the Activated Disciple. What is what is the title called? Yeah, yeah, it's called the Activated Disciple: Taking Your Faith to the Next Level. And basically, it is about 
really a very, very down-to-earth look at what does it mean to be a disciple? Not just hypothetically, but I mean, what does your day look like? If you, you know, if, if, if you wanted to talk to Matthew or Peter or Andrew, you know, 2,000 years ago, and you asked them, well, what's it like to be a disciple of Jesus? They would not tell you a bunch of theology. They'd say, oh, it's awesome. I mean, here's what we do. We, we, we live together. We walk together. He does these kinds of things, and he has us doing this, and he corrected Peter the other day, you know, and it's all very relational type of type of thing. So um, I think that the book is unique in that it is a real historical look at what did it mean to be a disciple? How did you become a disciple? And how do we do that today? What does your day look like? How do you craft a day? How do you craft a life rather than just saying, well, these are things I believe, you know? Yeah, the word disciple implies discipline, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, the Hebrew word is a Talmud. It's a disciplined follower of a great, a great man. And of course, this great rabbi that we follow, Jesus, uh, is the second person of the Trinity, you know. And one of the one of the interesting things, Bear, about this is that and, and you you use this actually in your life. I mean, you invited me to ride with you next year. You would never invite me to ride unless you thought Jeff's capable of doing this, right? You, you wouldn't do that. I would be a nothing but a burden on you and your team. You say, well, has Jeff, does Jeff know how to ride long distance? Well, yeah, he's, he's ridden 150,000 miles, you know, long distance. So, so you made a decision based on, on who you thought I was and who I, who I can become. And, and that's the way it was in becoming a disciple. The, the rabbi would choose you. Remember, Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And they would choose you based on one criteria. Does that rabbi think that you have the ability to become like him? And so when Jesus chooses you, it means he thinks you can become like him. But you can't become like him without being with him. Uh, and that doesn't mean 7 o'clock on Tuesday night in room 107 of St. Agnes Church. You know, that means full time. You're, you're going to be with Jesus and he's going to make you into himself and he believes in you. You know, that's why he chose you. So b- discipleship is about being chosen. I, I love that. So it's not yeah. that we chose him, but he chose us. But then we, but then we respond and we, and, we, and we give that yes. Think about it. As you look at, you look at um, King David. And he talks about how he arose in the third hour of the night, or I forget what hours of the night. Um, he was praying. He had a, he had a regular, uh, not every hour, but he, he had a, a regular uh, uh, like a discipline discipline of different times of the day, even in the middle of the night, of getting up to pray. And then you see yeah. that same pattern in this beautiful gift the church has given us in the liturgy of the hours. Yeah. It's, a, it's a daily rigor. You look at, I'm, I'm a Benedictine of late, uh, the rule of St. Benedict. You know, the, the, there's a, you know if you're going to be a, a great athlete, you know, uh, and, you know I, I know when I was training for the world titles, I... I I did five hours a week of flexibility training. I was in the water probably 15 hours a week. Uh, I was not eating certain things and eating other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I certainly, there were certainly some people that weren't on my championship diet. I didn't allow them in my life because they were a distraction or they were negative or they brought me down. Um, So if we're going to be like, as as Paul challenged Timothy to be an athlete, um, we need to, we need to put a pattern into our lives of, what, what is our daily and weekly pattern going to be? And the church invites us to do that. What would be a good example of that for someone who say this is their first time to try to really lay down a pattern in their life? Right. Well, and you're right. You, I mean, your goal, Bear, was you wanted a world championship. So everything was surrounding that, and you got the world championship. Uh, our goal is to get to heaven. You know, Amen. Be with God forever and ever. Therefore, we've got to craft our life all the way from, you know, exercise and what we eat and so forth. One of the things that I recommend people do in the morning is to meet with God every day. Just even if it's only 15, 20 minutes to start with, just just meet with him. Make it the, the, the top priority of your day and and do Lexio Divina. That is read scripture and listen to what God is saying to you today because you can take that into your into your life. The second thing is, is that we're trying to teach people um, situational awareness. Uh, look for opportunities to pray for people, to encourage someone, to overhear someone saying something as you're standing at Starbucks, you know, and say, hey, I, I couldn't help but, you know, overhear what you just said. You, can I pray for you or oh, beautiful. whatever? 
Yeah. Uh, we, we do this every day. I try to witness to two people every day. See, tell but them about that's it. built in. And that's the Holy Spirit in. gives you those appointments. And I like what you said. I found in ministry, too, one of the, one of the, the sooner as you can pray with someone, it's kind of like that's when the magic happens. And, the first, and you do, and you start them out, and you start it out with a question. You just start out by preaching. You ask them a question. And then, yeah. and then you get to the point where you say, can I pray with you? And then that's when the Holy Spirit you know, kind of shows up. But I like that you get, uh, there's this scripture verse in Proverbs, and you know it well, when God is speaking to Job, and he's referring to him, did you do this? Did you do that? And he's talking about the horse and the power of the horse. And I, when I read that, I think this is how men should be, like this yeah. horse. And it says, he hears the roar of the officers. Are we hearing that roar? In the mornings, are we getting up, having our first cup of coffee with the Lord, Lectio Divina, being quiet and still right. and listening? But then what happens is in, 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 when we go out into the fray then, there is the still small voice within us, but there's also the scripture verse says, there, is a, there will be a voice behind you shouting, this is the way, follow it. You have to yeah. start out in the morning to be able to, to hear God's voice, kind of get your marching orders and to be connected. But then yeah. during the day, let the officers roar. Let, let, let the Lord speak. Let the, you know what I mean? Just be ready to respond. Uh, yeah, no, that's perfect. That's exactly yeah. what we're talking about, Bear, is that, is that, you know, some people say, well, I never get the, I never get these opportunities like you do, Jeff. I say, no, you do. You do. You yeah. just don't take them. You don't take those opportunities. But they don't feel prepared. And, Right. And the, the number one thing Jesus said, the number one phrase he said was, do not be afraid. And the reason I think he said that is that if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to have some opportunities to be a little bit fearful. It's like you go riding with me on a motorcycle for 500 years and you go through Beartooth Pass or you go through. I love the Beartooth sun. Pass. You know what? You, you might have some you might have some feelings of apprehension here a little bit. You, you go down 3000 feet next to the road, you know, don't be afraid. But did You're, he say you had to be a theolo theological expert? No. Jesus said, be my witnesses. Yes. Just say, Jesus loves me. I mean, I got to tell you, I know him. Yep. And he loves you. I mean, you don't have to be the deepest. If you, if you needed to be that deepest theological person for that person at that moment, they probably wouldn't have sent you. What and you know what, Bear? The, the New Testament says that the Holy Spirit confirms the message. It, the, you don't have to run around confirming the message. You just have to give people the message. And the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to confirm this in their life. And all of a sudden, that guy you're talking to starts crying. It's like, I well, need I, what you're saying. <laughs> you know, um, we got to take a quick break here. But my, our good friend Jay Flunker had to take a big detour on his bike on season one. He had to roll back. Uh, to San Antonio, and he went to the Harley De Davidson dealership there. And but there was some point he had he had a motorcycle problem. He had to go get it repaired. But while he was there, there was a man he started to witness to, and he said, "My," and he said, "You don't you want you don't understand this." Last night, my wife and I were talking about how we need to return to the Catholic Church. So God has divine appointments for us. We just need to wake up. This yep. is Bear Wozniak with Deep Adventure Ministries, and I'm talking with Jeff Cavins, the the man behind the Great Adventure Timeline series. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've got Jeff Cavins with us, who is uh, so well-known and loved for this series he does called The Great Adventure, the, Bible, the Through the Bible Timeline series, and his new Bible, The Great Adventure uh, Bible. Uh, but I got, you know, we were talking about how he's saying this new book, The Activated Disciple, how you put a, a discipline in your life. And I'm going to tell you a, I'm going to tell you a secret, Jeff. The two C's of prayer. The two C's of meditation, the two C's of the, of study, coffee and cigars. <laughs> coffee by morning and a cigar by night, and you know you you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. My, my two or three cups of coffee in the morning. I start out my day. I go turn on the coffee. I go out on the night by the ocean, and I start real nice and slow. But that first two or three sips of coffee, I'm into the scriptures, or whatever devotional study or the liturgy of the hours. But you know, Jeff, my favorite time is in the evenings. Yep. Uh, and you don't like cigars, do you? Yeah, I, I actually I do. In <laughs> fact, uh, I've got uh, I picked up a new one uh, just yesterday called My Father, the uh, the Grand Offering. It's called brand new. It's the Grand Offering. You know, they have My Father, the Judge, and and they have all of the all of these, and they're they're just an Oliva, very good. I love Oliva, Oliva cigars. Yeah. 
Yeah, hey, so I, I still have to get yours. You, you're going to send me your little package. I got to tell you, we had Notre Dame Federal Credit Union um, last week. One of our sponsors, we love them. And one of the men there, uh, uh, Tom Gripe, who's the CEO, uh, met him in, at the Napa Institute. And he, he bought a sampler set and brought it back, gave it to some of the, his friends. And one of his men there at, at, at the credit union just said, this is the best cigar I've ever had. Really? So we have really good cigars. I really took my time uh, selecting them. The Seven Virtue Cigars are uh, available at our website, and you can get it by the sampler set, and soon you can buy them by the, by the box too. But it's the Seven Virtues. So when you have a cigar with a friend, you're reading uh, about Caritas or, or Love yep. uh, as the name of that particular blend of cigars. So there's seven blends. The three theological virtues are the Maduros, and the medium blends are the cardinal virtues. But when you want to peel the label, and you have to to really enjoy the cigar because the label's so big, there's a, something from one of my books on, on the heroic virtue. So it gets men to, to talk about um, something other than just football. But Jeff, isn't it true? I just got to tell you, the depth of my reading and spirituality, and my father too, my father's hooked on cigars now. I told him, it's going to stunt your growth, Dad. But he just called me today and goes, hey, where's my box of cigars? Because every <sighs> afternoon he'll go out and he'll spend an hour reading. He's studying Padre Pio now and have a cigar. And at night, uh, I may be reading for 20 or 30 minutes. Um, right now I'm reading um, uh, the, the St. John Chrysostom's uh, um, um, commentaries on Acts. And a little bit, sometimes uh -huh. a little bit hard. But I go, oh, my cigar's only halfway done. I guess I'll keep reading, you know? <laughs> it's about coffee and cigars. Tell the truth. Yeah. That, you know, you and I are an awful lot alike. It, maybe it's good that we live on opposite sides of the country. <laughs> but we're going to have cigars with your friends up in uh, Calgary, right? Yes, absolutely. On these long trips every night, guys, uh, after dinner, they all sit outside the hotel and uh, have cigars and they fellowship for about an hour. Yeah, every night. it takes an hour. Yeah. You know, there's something about it that's meditative and it brings guys together. I know that some people might not understand it, but I think one of the reasons that guys like cigars is the minute you light it, you know, for the next hour to an hour and a half, I can just relax with my friends here. I don't have to mow the lawn and smoke a cigar at the same time. You know, this is a time to relax and, and, uh, and, and fellowship with other, other brothers. And, uh, I know a lot of a lot of the Dennis Prager on, on radio. A lot of these guys, they all they smoke cigars. It seems and they like the new evangelization. I, you know what I think it is? Is because it's a callback to manliness. You know, there's very few areas that are kind of just for men. And though some women do smoke cigars, um, yeah. You know, for the most part, it I call it my solid my my uh, a solitude maker. Yeah. When I sit down at the beach in Waikiki at sunset, people don't people. I find a place where there's no one, but no one comes and sits by me, and I, I have my beach chair, and I have my iPad, and I and I read, and I have my yeah. cigar. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, if, well, next year we'll have to get a, a box of your your cigars. Maybe you can do a maybe I can do a, a new branding of cigar through you, the Great Adventure Cigar That's Set. That's a good with idea. One cigar for every period. Let's do it. That <laughs> let's do it. I mean, but I, I'll tell you, I think there really is something about the the, the cigar, the G.K. Chesterton. A thing uh, I bet so much of his writing and thinking was done because a cigar makes you stop in your tracks. Uh, people want to usually leave you alone unless they're having one, and then you can share it with them. And I'm not saying it in, in a very slight way. I'm actually kind of saying it in a serious way. I think there's something about the new evangelization that's calling men uh, back to, be, to manly virtue. I don't yeah. say masculine virtue. I say manly virtue. And somehow, somewhere along the line, uh, men kind of have reconnected to to that you know when i you know why i learned how to smoke a cigar was in uh i had my cabin in montana i built it myself up by glacier park and it was uh i mean i had a couple people help me but it was kind of like my little terrible idea and uh project to to kind of do do most of the work and these little things used to bite me and i go what, what's biting me i can't even see him and it's because they call him no see him so you should have a cigar it'll get rid of him and i had a swisher sweet and that was <laughs> 1997 probably and uh -huh. uh, ever since then, my spiritual life has gone deeper. <laughs> <laughs> but let's oh, get back fun. to this activated disciple yeah. um, concept. But what, what I am saying is I'm telling you my pattern. I have my coffee in the morning, and I have my prayer time. Uh, you know, reading the liturgy of the hours of the mornings. And then in right. the evening, I have my sacred reading time with my cigar. So, I mean, that, that's a pattern, right? What kind of it pattern? pattern. What, would, what would you recommend to, to um, let's say, not someone who's a brand-new Christian, but someone who now 
wants to go deeper and really activate their discipleship? Yeah, I would, I would say start to uh, partition your day with some discipline that uh, no matter what happens tomorrow morning, I'm going to spend time with Jesus and I'm going to get my marching orders for the day. I'm going to hear him speak to me in his word and I'll take that message throughout the day and I'll probably have opportunities to apply it. And then I'll be situationally aware throughout the day. I, when I think about my kids, I'll pray for them and so forth. And then before I go to bed at night, there's a time of the examination, the examine prayer. And I look back at my day, like it's kind of like Jesus taking a, a YouTube video of you all day long and saying, can we just review this for a minute? <laughs> and you look back at your day and you praise God for the good things that he has given you. And you make the corrections when when you need to and what you need to do the next the next day. But bear, there, there shouldn't be a day that goes. If you're, there is no such thing as a disciple part time or, you know, I just believe these things. This is a real relationship. And I also encourage people throughout the day, if you're in your car and you want to pray, talk out loud. Talk yeah. to God. It, it works good when you're out stand up paddling, too. Yeah. I find myself kind of talking to God and I'm all of a sudden I'm going under a wave. I go, that doesn't work so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just be with him. Talk with him. Talk to him. You know, don't, you know. If, what if what if Jesus was with Peter and Matthew, and and he looked back at them at the end of the day and said, "Hey guys, you haven't said anything to me all day." And they said, "Oh yeah, we we have Jesus. We just thought it." <laughs> well, you know, also it's like this. It's like um, huh, sometimes it's like people talk about God like he's not even there. You know, like. When you're a bad kid and you get sent to the principal's office and your mom is there and your dad is there and the principal is there and they talk about, about your behavior like you're not even in the room. <laughs> I'm sure you've had a time like that. But, oh, yeah. I mean, God's right here. And people yeah. will the theorize about him and philosophize about him or like, like Job's friends, you know, uh, talked about him. But, didn't, but Job finally said to, to God, he got mad at God. He got real with God. And then God got real with him, you know, but yeah. But the, the guys who were just theorizing about God, what a waste of time. God is right here, right now. As soon as we're done with this show, someone could pray. What, what kind of prayer would you suggest they pray as soon as we're done with this show? Well, I, I would pray, Lord, help me to become sensitive to your presence and to not lose sight of the fact that you are with me constantly. The Jews have a word for it. It's called kavana, and it means focus focus. And I think that one of the things that's the hardest about being a disciple is, is maintaining that awareness 24 seven. It's a discipline. Once you do it, once you do it, it's a gift, you know? Well, you talk about uh, situational awareness. We got like 30 seconds left, but I know you also uh, train people in gun safety and, and uh, uh, how to carry, you know, the, the, and a big part of that is situa It's, you know, one of the best things you can do so you never have to draw a gun is to have situational awareness. You know, get where out. to be and where not to be. <laughs> Absolutely. We're talking with Jeff Cavins. Hey, Jeff, uh, can we just like write an email to each other after this and say, can we talk again in six weeks? Because it was too sure. Good. I really love, uh, you can see I kind of get almost too talkative when, I, oh, I do get too talkative when I talk. Oh, uh, we're just good friends. You energize me so much. But um, so the, the new book is called Activated Discipleship. It's, it's, it, it's being released yep. right now. Yeah, it's coming out in about two weeks. The activated disciple, so it'll it'll be out for this uh, this fall, Christmas, and all that. And where can they get that? They can get that at ascensionpress.com, and I believe the Amazon and everyone else will have it too. And that's so. where they can go to get the new uh, Great Adventure Bible, and they can get your, adventure. your the, the Great Adventure with, Time with your compass on the front. Yeah, well, my son's designed this beautiful compass for my website, so it's not quite <laughs> the same. But I mean, I dig compasses, you know. I, I remember getting lost in Montana hunting in the snow, and I, I didn't believe my compass. And I ended up uh, finding someone else. I was lost, and I found someone else's tracks, and I guess I'll follow those guys' tracks. He must know where he's going. And I finally realized they were my own tracks. I had come full circle. Oh, that's funny. So we need a compass. Yeah. And we need the catechism, and we need the scriptures. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We've been talking with my friend Jeff Cavins. Uh, Jeff, uh, we'll... Uh, We'll talk to you again soon. We'll plan out our trip from Coco Martin on motorcycles from Cocoa Beach to Alaska. Sounds good. God bless okay. you. Okay. Until next week, uh, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. 
and find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group. All at BearWasning.com.